Hello, Chronotic fans. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our first episode of the official Chronotic DevCast, short for Developer Podcast. We're going to basically be um, talking about the projects for the company, the direction that we intend to go into in the upcoming uh, days, weeks, and months, as well as um, discussing certain topics um, each episode uh, related to um, the things that we do here in general, including the uh, skill sets that we employ at the company, uh, as well as uh, how other people can make use of them. And um, this week's topic actually is uh, going to be a very special one because it's something I've noticed that a lot of people in our generation uh, among millennials uh, are suffering from, which is uh, procrastination and the ability to uh, focus on your projects and work. Especially if you're in a managerial position or in a position where you want to do something for yourself. Now, when I say managerial, I don't necessarily mean um, that you're running uh, a company like we do here. I'm talking more in the sense that you want to just do something special for yourself. And you uh, tend to fall in the habit of not being able to finish what you start. And I feel that this is a problem that a lot of people out there suffer from. There's no way it's just me. <laughs> um, however, this podcast and, and um, this, this endeavor right now that uh, I'm trying to launch here is the result of being able to begin to solve this. So I'm not saying that I've gotten the hang of it, but uh, I do feel that if you are able to hear this, then that technically means that I've passed the first hurdle and uh, I'm on my way to uh, basically being consistent with my ability to deliver. Now, whether you're delivering something for uh, your fans, your base, or yourself, all of it involves dedication, but there are also a few tips and tricks that you can learn from. And today, um, what I want to uh, talk about is basically how to audiovisually program um, uh, useful or productive habits into your mind. And um, this podcast, in a sense, is born out of this method as well. So uh, while I'm talking to you here, um, basically I'm using both audio and visuals in order to be able to communicate with you what I want you to know, whether it's about us or whether it's something about yourself, something that you could do. So, uh, in a sense, it's basically a proof of concept. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's also a fact for a lot of people who um, pass their exams or pass their schoolwork successfully. They have to audiovisually be able to study. Like, it's not just enough to be able to stare at something and read it. And um, uh, the, I, I do believe that there are lots of symptoms out there for conditions or syndromes that people have that relate to this problem as well, problem of being a, of, of uh, procrastinating and not being able to finish your work. And um, basically what I've noticed is, is uh, throughout my life, everybody around me, anybody who suffered this problem, they usually defer to audiovisual aid in order to be able to uh, nestle something in their mind. So um, without further ado, let's explain how this actually works. So let's say, for example, you start a new project for um, a cosplay or, or, or a uh, video game or a, um, a, uh, uh, you want to pass your exam, for example. Like, yes, you can even consider that kind of uh, like a sort of project because you never know what might come. But at the same time, you have the tools necessary to finish it. I think uh, we all want to be able to do something only after we know that we have what it takes to finish it, to finish what we start. But the problem always is, how do you finish? How do you actually get through the thick of it and finish? And the answer is, the first thing that you first and foremost need to do is to be able to program your mind to follow the habits necessary in order for you to be able to carry on and finish. That includes things like motivation, it includes things like uh, research. And the thing that I want to focus on is actually research, more than motivation. It's actually pretty easy to look at something something small or something you think you could be able to do quickly and motivate yourself to start. 
but the, the challenge is always can you motivate yourself to finish and the best way to do that is to actually be able to make a habit out of finishing things even when you're not motivated and the best way to accomplish that is to use audio visual programming so how does this work exactly well uh, notice that I also talked about research researching how to finish things I researched how I can stay focused on any project so that's something that I told myself and the most important thing I've noticed is that my research process involved looking up videos, looking up po other people's podcasts, looking up uh, uh, things to read, things to listen to, things to watch, which also involves listening, and basically a combination of my senses uh, 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 is, is getting rewired in order to memorize and know as much as I can about continuing to do this. So. You don't necessarily have to memorize mentally something in order to be able to memorize it uh, instinctively or subconsciously. As a matter of fact, the more you research into something, you don't necessarily have to remember it, but you should reliably be able to find that information again the way you found it the first time. And more importantly, you should be able to review it over and over again. So in other words, repetition is part of the process, but you don't necessarily have to review the same source. So if you find multiple sources, for example, multiple videos discussing a certain topic, watching each and every single one of those videos from different people, different voices, different faces, different diagrams, flowcharts, all sorts of information uh, being delivered to you that converges to the same facts, converges to the same uh, uh, processes that you have to follow in order to be able to finish your work. As long as you're continuously doing this, eventually you will not need to memorize things actively in order to motivate yourself to continue finishing them. So research, it's not necessarily what you research or what you found from it as much as it's how you research. And um, the biggest thing that I basically want to tell you about this is that you have to be able to research things uh, from different sources. And let's say, for example, I don't know, you want to build the Iron Man suit. Let's say uh, for your cosplay, yeah, you want to build the uh, the Mark III, the first one with the gold and the yellow uh, 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 paint job. I would say there is there is a lot of videos of other fans of other cosplayers that have actually done this, and they've motivated in the same way, of course, uh, put out these videos for themselves, uh, um, constructing it and being able to do it. Now, do you have to follow exactly what every single one of them did? Not necessarily, and that's because it would be a very costly process to include every single detail out there in one process, uh, in one, uh, uh, I would say, uh, go, or in one attempt. So instead, what you do is you look at all sorts of different sources for the end result. The end goal, I want to build the Mark III. But um, the beginning, you can do it from multiple uh, uh, different uh, guides out there. And uh, if, if you have the money for it, you can totally <laughs> uh, commission people to build uh, the whole suit or different parts of it. Honestly, though, I think it would be a lot fun to be able to build different parts of the suit and commission people to different uh, to build different uh, parts of it but in the end you did not rely on one source for everything this is actually a common fact in life you should never ever rely on only one source of information whether it's to learn something or whether it's to um, whether it's to uh, uh, just even keep up with the news or keep up with any uh, uh, events going on out there you should never ever base everything off of one side or one source and this also applies to being able to focus and being able to finish your work and finish and uh, doing the research in order to do that but the tip here the trick here is not to study it like you do in school the trick here is that you have to look up as many different sources and make sure that they're all converging to the same result now uh, mathematics is a good example you could uh, basically uh, find uh, different ways to prove the same theory, but you have to make sure that the same uh, that that the, that the theory itself is correct to begin with. So you don't just look up some random equations, some random person online uh, cooked up. You have to make sure, of course, you have to authenticate what you're looking. 
uh, you have to verify. So you have to make sure in the end that what you're looking at is solid. It's not like something that someone guessed or something that someone did not prove in front of you. But there are different ways to achieve different things and researching all of them is a lot better than trying to memorize to heart one of them. So one easy way, once again, to be able to uh, focus on everything uh, that you want to do or focus on one thing at a time that you want to accomplish is to find all different sources of information on how to accomplish it and just continuously uh, review it. You don't have to memorize, no need for like, you know, repetitive playing of the same video over and over again. You can do it occasionally, but make sure you mix in all sorts of other things in it. Um, once you do that, your body actually will adapt to this process a lot better than your active conscious mind will. Uh, how does this work? Well, basically sounds, audio, uh, video uh, in general, and your different senses, they react on cues. So in other words, when you hear certain words or when you hear certain things, even if you did not actively sit down in order to memorize them, your body could still like, you know, react or jolt or, or like, you know, have a reflex in a certain way to things that you've uh, uh, instinctively memorized before. And that's why I call it more of an audiovisual programming of the brain rather than an active uh, memorization trick. So it's not really a memorization trick and you can't really guarantee the results at the end that you're going to be able to recite something word for word. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about, about being able to focus on researching something and doing something. I personally, I did that for podcasts and I've realized there's not much to them. And that's why I'm doing this right now. But the point um, I'm trying to make is that since I got here, this was the result of being able to, to find all sorts of different uh, uh, sources of information in order to find out how exactly I can stay focused and actually finish uh, what I set off on doing. So uh, yeah, that's the uh, topic of the day. Um, as for our weekly stuff, for our weekly content, um, we have basically uh, uh, a large giveaway happening at the end of the month. However, we're not telling you right off the bat how to do it. I can tell you that the prize is a lot bigger and is not just um, our card games for uh, Cons Against Our Sanity or uh, uh, any of our other products that you can find on Chronotic Ultra. Instead, uh, it's going to be a combination of that and more things to it. So you're going to have to uh, go to our live channel, sorry, our uh, live stream in order to be able to uh, keep up and find all the different clues for the giveaway. But I did give you enough in this one. Uh, you should go for some, uh, I would say, uh, scavenge hunt in order to be able to find out from our different outlets, basically, where exactly it is that you could uh, uh, enter the giveaway and possibly win. And I can tell you this, I can already see that people have already picked up on it. So um, some people have, in fact, um, um, noticed some of the clues that we gave off and uh, reacted in a certain way that indicated that they knew. And, the, and we know that they know right now, so it's going to be very interesting. They're a very small number, so their chances, all of them, are very high to win. So I strongly recommend that you also do a little bit of searching yourself in order to be able to, uh, to compete with them while the chances are still high, while no one else is, is uh, out there, uh, or, or no, while no one else is uh, still uh, aware of this. Uh, so yeah, uh, another thing that's happening uh, this week on, on Thursday, we have a live stream coming up, and it's basically a uh, uh, going to be our first year anniversary. Collins Against Our Sanity is actually one year old, so yeah, um, we're going to have a live stream, and uh, we're going to basically showcase um, both Volume 1 and 2 uh, at the Cloak and Blaster here in Orlando. And uh, if you uh, own a copy of our game and you decide to come over, uh, we'll treat you to one free drink. So yeah, uh, bring over your box, show us uh, that you bought the game. Uh, and uh, if you show us proof over there, yeah, enjoy your drink. And join us, of course, for um, um, the, uh, uh, the live stream itself, as well as the game itself. Uh, you could win a prize at the end if you, um, if you actually win the entire uh, tournament that day. Yeah, we're going to be having it a little bit like a tournament style thing. So uh, we'll, hear, we'll give you more details about that when the time arrives. In the meantime, um, 
This is uh, Izzy with Chronotic Media, and I am very thankful and happy that you listened to our first uh, podcast, and I will see you guys next week. Have a good one.